Hang on, buddy. You stay there. We got medics coming, okay? Don't this is the moment Matt Ream was rescued from his wrecked truck. An incredible survival story captured our attention over the holiday. He survived for nearly a week in the cold in part by drinking rainwater. The 27-year-old trapped in the vehicle for six days over Christmas. He was pinned in the vehicle with his phone out of reach. A week of being trapped. Reem says rainfall helped to keep him alive. Matt Reem trapped in his vehicle for six days before help arrived. I rolled twice, went through a creek, and then landed under the bridge. A Northwest Indiana man survived for six days in his crashed truck before a dramatic rescue that saved his life. I can't rant to this. Yeah, you can rap. All right, all right. Let's do this. All right. So this is a jacket that I had <laughs> in my truck <laughs> that I used as a pillow. Finally got it back from the dry cleaners. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh. <laughs> Me and Max, we getting paid every Why is day. This hard? We getting paid. Hey, hey, let them hate. That's what we do. So it's fuck you. If you intrude, <laughs> you must be mad. You, you hit We don't give two shits and we don't give a fuck. <laughs> we well, Eric kind of told me a little bit of what happened to you, and I'm like, holy shit, like, I have no room to complain about anything. I actually ended up really liking that beat before we went on it. Venzelis Romas Igorovich. Igorovich. Everybody. Welcome to another episode of Life to the Max. Yeah. We got Senor Lagordovich, Matt Reem. But he has something in common with Max, and they both share very tragic car accidents. Traumatic. Traumatic. Yeah. Give me a couple more adjectives. Uh, trauma know. inducing. Trauma yeah. inducing. Trauma inducing. Scary. You know, yep. that's, that's, that's easy. That's, that's easy you know, and we're going to go right into Matt's story right after the Quad Fathers intro. Yes, I'm a disabled vet, and I'm paralyzed from a neck down, breathing through a machine, but that doesn't stop me from following my dreams and doing what I love to do. I don't got an excuse, and neither should you. Let's get into Matt Reams' episode. We really appreciate you traveling yeah. a few hours to, to yeah. come see us. How was yeah. the drive? Uh, besides driving through Chicago, it wasn't bad. Uh, where are you from? Uh, South Bend, Indiana. Nice, from nice. South we appreciate Bay. you. Yeah. Is that where Notre Dame is? Yeah. Yeah, that's where Notre Dame is. So at. you're a fighting Irish guy? I am a fighting Irish fan. Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> right to the insult. Red flag. <laughs> well, I mean, at least I'm not a Michigan fan. Yeah, that's true. I'm not a Michigan oh, fan. Oh, man. We got two guests that traveled to be with us on the podcast, Thanks. and the other one was from Michigan. Yeah, the other one's from Shaw Ross Capicchioni. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who do you all so the, this podcast here? is all about, you know, stories, just storytelling. There's no wrong answers. All types of individuals come on sharing all types of stories for Max and, and anyone listening. For and you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's more than entertainment. It's almost like therapy for anyone else that's also been in similar situations. And uh, I'm excited to hear your story, Matt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's just uh, get right into it. So, uh, I mean, obviously a lot of people know who you are around this area because of uh, the, the news headlines and all the attention you're getting. So can you uh, explain uh, what happened uh, with uh, um, basically what, what happened? Uh, those, what were the dates again? Uh, from December 20th to December 26th. December 20th to December 26th, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I had been in Hobart, Indiana for the day, uh, at our hall, practicing welding, kind of teaching some of the younger apprentices, uh, how to weld better for work. And I was, got done with that about four o'clock, uh, went out, did a little bit of window shopping for Christmas week before Christmas. I always got to shop for myself and uh, went to Hooters later that night after shopping. Let's go. 
Do see it. some good ass. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It, it's it's always a good time at Hooters. At so- in South Bend. <laughs> in uh, in Hobart. Yeah, or out, outside of Hobart. You're, you're, telling and, me, and, uh, you're telling me Indiana girls are hot. Th- there are a few, far and few in, between. In, in, <laughs> I said there's a few. In Hooters. Uh, you gotta take me to the scooters, bro. Oh yeah, gotta, oh yeah. I'll investigate. Gotta, You'll I investigate. Just, it. I gotta do a little reconnaissance. But oh, yeah. anyways, so guys, do, do a little story yeah, on the Hooters there. Yeah, so you went to Hooters. <laughs> yeah, um, and a couple weeks before that, one of my friends had passed away, and uh, R.I.P. to your friend, man. Yeah, and so I had missed his funeral uh, in Valpo and his family was going to do a viewing and the final burial down in Missouri, which is where his family lives now. And so I was kind of beating myself up over it because I was going to, I wanted to be there for my friend, you know, show my last, show my last, like, uh, uh, my gratitude towards him. Of course. And, uh, you know, so I was, because I was planning on staying in Hobart for three days. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, drive home Christmas weekend, and then do something for Christmas. You, so you live in Hobart? No, I, I, I live in South Bend. South Bend? How far away is that? Uh, about an hour drive. Okay. Um, so like the drive here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Two and a half hours out here. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> um. So I started driving from Hobart to South Bend with the intention of Thursday. I was going to pack up a couple suits, uh, a couple changes of clothes, and drive down to Missouri to be there for my friend's funeral on Friday. So anytime I drive from Gary, Hobart area, I always take the toll road because there's a lot less traffic, a lot, lot less drama, shit like that. But that night I accidentally took... Uh, 8094 and uh, is that a highway? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just the state highway, state interstate. We and, got something in common, but continue. Yeah, I start driving on that, and I realize, oh shit, you know, I'm not on the, I'm not on the toll road. I'm going to make a U-turn and uh, go on there because the toll road t- takes me directly to my house. The highway that I was on takes me to like the opposite side of town and then I have to drive all through downtown South Bend at night which nobody likes to do just like driving through South Sh- South Side Chicago oh, it's uh it's it's bad South it, Bend some parts so I take the first exit and I get onto the overpass get back on the highway going westbound and it was foggy as hell that night I mean I could probably only see 10 15 feet in front of me and, um, you know, going 70 miles an hour, your reactions have to be pretty focused. And uh, I thought I saw what I thought was a deer or at least deer eyes on the highway. So I swerved to miss the deer because I wanted to be there for his funeral. Otherwise, if I didn't have to be there for the funeral, I would have hit the thing fucking square on. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so I swerved and I went over the shoulder and then kind of into the grass a little bit. And as soon as I started to go back on the highway, um, I hit the guardrail that had just basically popped up. Now, are you like up in the air? Like, is, are, you, are you like on a bridge or something right now? Um, it started to go around a corner which had a bridge on it. Okay. So. I hit that guardrail and it tore off the uh, tire, the rotor, wheel bearing assembly, all that on my driver's side and sent me down this hill. Um, And what was the initial feeling when you felt that gravity pull you down? You know, like, like as soon as you lost control, what was going through your mind? Basically, we're allowed to cuss on here, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course. Um, I'm like, what the fuck just happened? And then I start going down the hill and, you know, by then I don't have any control of my truck. So I'm just like, fuck, you know, and it's just that almost sense of helplessness knowing that anything could happen in the next couple seconds. And 
So it starts going down the hill and it starts going sideways. And I roll twice uh, down the hill through a creek to where I landed underneath the bridge. Underneath the bridge? Underneath the bridge. Is this uh, at night? Yeah. So this was at roughly 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. So 11, 11 at night? So What's the weather like? So it's foggy and foggy. dark. Foggy. What's the temperature? I heard it was like freezing temperatures. No, it was like 40s, 50s. Okay. It, it was a warm winter this year. Well, thank, year. thank God it was 40s, 50s. So yeah. under, under the bridge, you're upside down? I'm on my three tires. Okay, and are you like in shallow water? Uh, no, I'm I'm fully up on the the bank of the river, but the bank of the river was pitched pretty pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, had I been like sitting upright in my truck, upright in the seat, I would have been interesting, leaning just about like that. So. Um, during, during the initial rolling and everything, I ended up losing consciousness. And so when I came to, um, that's when I kind of realized I'm like, oh fuck, you know, I don't have a horn. I don't have lights. I don't have, um, I can't hit my 911 call button. Uh, you know, I try calling out for my phone, trying to I don't want to say it because I know it will go off yeah. right now. <laughs> or, hey, Alexa, yeah. you know. Um, I can't I, – I try doing that over and over and over, and I don't get any response, any answer. So, you know, after that, I spent, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes just yelling at the top of my lungs trying to get somebody to hear me. And at that point, you know, just from – the adrenaline kind of wearing off and everything. So that's also when I realized that my leg was stuck. So when my truck hit the bank of the river, it pushed the engine into my leg. Uh, Jesus. Just completely crushing me. Or crushing the oh lower part of my left leg. Um, but... I had lost all feeling of it in it almost instantly, which I'm kind of thankful for, kind of not, but. So where, did you feel any pain at all or were you just stuck? Not, I felt some pain in my right leg just because of the way all the plastic had kind of wrapped around my leg, kind of keeping it stuck. Um, so like every time, like over the next six days, every time I would, try pulling my leg out of there. Um, it was scraping or cutting against something, and I could feel that. Um, and, of course, my right hand was uh, pretty well shattered in all my metacarpals. And, you know, I, I just knew that even though it was that shitty of a situation, I still had to try to keep staying alive. You keep know? your composure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so how, how did like the first night go going into the morning? Like, did you, did you think like, uh, someone would find you right away? Like, cause, or did you, were you kind of like, you know, secluded? Um, so I didn't really know what was around me at the mile marker I was at, um, in terms of, you know, properties, right on the other side of this uh, row of trees or whatever. Um, So as far as I know, I didn't know what was around me. Um, You know, I had a creek running right on the other side of my truck that that was just about the only noise I could hear besides all the cars driving over me. That must have been so hard because, because the cars are so loud. Yeah. And well, what about psychologically? Like you want to be saved and you hear people over you. Yeah. You know, you just hear people that could potentially save you passing yeah. you by. And that would drive thousands of people. Um, and also, I was right down the road from not one, but two fire stations. <sighs> wow. So within, 
I would say probably about five miles of me, there were two firehouses that I could hear like at night whenever somebody called 911 and they the called fuck out of here. That's they could call the fire department I could hear the fire trucks leaving the stations and I could hear that the entire time unbelievable so it's like a tease well, I was yeah. just about to say that it was God teasing you like yeah damn uh, do what did you hear the one that came for you yes Yes, I did hear that wait, one. Wait, mom, Jesus. <laughs> let me, Be nice, let Max. Let me control my show. Simmer mom. down, Max. <laughs> mom, you're grounded. <laughs> so, 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 so let me ask you a question. So, when, so the first day goes by, the second day. So did it get harder going throughout the days or did it get easier going throughout the days? Like, because usually, like, the first or second or third day are like the toughest and then you start getting used to it or you like feel defeated so like when you were like did you feel like defeated on or on your last leg or um did you like have did you keep hope that's a pretty good pun right there my yeah. last leg <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so like, did you keep hope you know, in a situation like that, you're going to have your ups and downs, right? So there were days when I had a lot of hope because, you know, I, I was trying to set like little goals for myself um, in terms of trying to get myself out of that situation. Um, you know, I one of my goals was grabbing my phone charger, grabbing my cord, um, and eventually grabbing my phone so I could call for, you know, rescue. Yeah. Um, so I think it was the day or two before Christmas, and I had gotten my phone charger, and I could, um, you know, my phone charger still had batteries. So if I could get my phone, I had a way to charge it. Um, Shortly after that, you know, I was able to grab my phone cord. So now I got my charger and my phone cord, and I think I know where my phone is. But let's just recap: Is this like your second day trying to get uh, everything together? Second, third day, yeah. Okay. Um, while I was down there, I did kind of lose sense of time. Uh, so I thought I, when I eventually did get rescued. Um, I thought I had been down there nine days instead of the six days that I... Uh, I mean, you were close. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the ballpark. You were right there. <laughs> um, so, the... Uh, so, like, so, like uh, mentally, like, I, I can't admit, so when I got uh, paralyzed, like, uh, I was, when I was alone at night, it was terrifying. It was fucking terrifying, man. And I had nurses, but I was paralyzed, and I had to trust these people with my life, with uh, the breathing machine, and I don't even know who these people are. Yeah. Now, it's a completely different situation with you, because you're alone, and you have like you know like a little function with your your other arm and stuff, and you're trying to like do all these things. But like I can't like at, at night was it hard? Um, I think at night there. So there were a couple nights I was down there where I thought I heard road crews working on the road right above me. So. A couple of those nights, I was just yelling as much and as loud as I could, trying to get somebody's, if, if there was even somebody up there, just trying to get their attention. Wow. So, so we talk a lot about this mentally, but physically, you know, I, I understand we could last a while without food, but what did you do right. for water? What did you do for drinking? So, yeah. so where I landed, um, every bridge has drainage spouts uh, for all the rainwater and everything like that so it doesn't just collect on the highway and it doesn't have anywhere to go. So somehow when I landed, I landed directly underneath one. Wow. To where, plan. To where when it rained, all the rainwater, mind you, this is coming off a highway, so it tastes like... Fuel. Asphalt, gas, diesel, rubber... Um, 
you know, it's probably got animal blood and shit in it. Yeah. And, um, but when it rained, all that water would come in to, through my sunroof that was shattered out. And I had a pair of sweatpants in my truck that I was able to basically collect the rainwater and just suck it out like and a sponge. Out. Oh, man. Dude, improvise, adapt, overcome. Those those are my words. Like, I love that. And what you did is just that, like, it hats off to you, man. Honestly, like, that, like that survival instinct to, like, Get the water that you need. Perfect to, time to fill your glass. Kudos yeah. With you. some pure water. Yeah. Kudos, kudos to you. Matt, improvise, adapt, overcome. And that's what you fucking did. And that is, that's what a soldier does, man. That's what a fucking warrior does. That is, that is awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I, like, I have mad respect. Like, just like, like, were you, when you were thirsty, is that what you thought of? Like, I'm just going to wring out my, my sweatpants? Yeah. Um, so I did try the water without trying to filter it somehow. And uh, that tasted like absolute shit. So I realized that that was not going to work to, you know, try to stay hydrated or as rehydrate myself as much as possible before or until the next rain, you know. How soon did you come up with that idea to wring it out with your sweatpants? Was um, it the day of, next day? Like after the first sip. First the first, the first day? No, after the first sip of water. Oh, okay. That's when I realized that it tasted like absolute shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did, so you're like, did you have any day. survival skills back then? Or, like, did this come, like, purely instinct? So, I've, I've always loved being outdoors and being in nature, things like that. And I think one thing that a lot of people, if they do have any experience outdoors, is having some survival skills. You know, whether it's... Uh, making a fire with two sticks and shit like that, or, you know, making your own charcoal uh, water purifier. You know, there, there are just some things that, you know, if you spend enough time outdoors and around people who are like-minded in that, you know, they're going to all kind of uh, build ideas off each other and build their skills off each other. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so you had some knowledge. Right. That's awesome. That's Well, thank God you did. You know what oh, I mean? Because, yeah. like, some some people would have just gave up, and you're like, no, nah, yeah. I'm going to drink the water out of my sweatpants. Sweatpants, filter like, system. It's like, come out on, Out of my man. gray gym that sweatpants. All right, all right, let's fast hold, forward. Hold on, hold on, I got something for you. I'm, okay. I'm flabbergasted trying to imagine yeah. myself in a situation trapped in your car for six days. So far, you've explained to us the second and third day. I kind of want you to walk us through the days as they went on. Yeah. Um, so the third day, the third and I think fifth day were two of the darkest days for me. Um, between kind of losing a lot of hope and feeling kind of defeated through that situation, um, you know, kind of... The uh, you mentioned it earlier, just the fact that I could hear all those cars, all the sirens, ambulances, fire trucks, and all that. Um, you know, it takes a very quick, dark toll on somebody. And uh, you know, those same sweatpants that were saving my life, I also used those to try to end my life. Um, so you know, th there's always good and bad to every story. And, you know, that was obviously one of the bad spots. But, um, you know, I came to the point where I was seeing stars and, you know, my vision was starting to black out. And uh, the one thing I did here was my friend telling me not to do it. And, wow. you know, it, it's... Do you have, like, out-of-body experience, spiritual maybe? The friend that you were on the way to see. Yeah. No, no. Oh. Uh, my best friend. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Do I shout him out? Yeah. Uh, her name's Kristen Grabeth. Uh, she used to live here in Elgin, but wow. Well, yeah. Small world. I think we're in El. We're in we're Elgin. Basically right? in Elgin. Okay. Basically in Elgin. Yeah. Um, shout out to her. Oh yeah, and you know, it was small little things like that that just kind of kept me going. Um, cause you know, while I was down there, I could hope and pray for a miracle. 
Um, but I've always been a real, uh, realist, so it's hard for me to accept, oh, you know, help is coming until help has came, you know? Um, so, you know, third, fourth day, um, they were about the same, wake up, try to, so I had a socket set in there, and I was using that socket set to try to basically unbolt my truck enough to where I could get out. Would you say this is the fourth day? Um, this was a combination of like one through six. Okay. Just trying to work my way out what of that. If, what if you did get out of it? Like, would you bleed out with your leg? Um, I didn't have any, my broken leg, I didn't have any, uh, any bleeding. Um, my right leg, it was, um, it was cut up, but it wasn't anything that I would have bled out from. So, um, you know, I, I had a, my steering wheel when it hit or when my truck hit, my steering wheel went from, you know, where you normally have it if you're driving or if you're in Atlanta, you do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it hit, it pushed my steering wheel, uh, into me and then into my leg. So it was basically resting my steering wheel on my center console, Mm -hmm. kind of pinning my right leg. While you're, the engine is pinning yeah. your other leg. Yeah. Um, Holy fuck, man. So, That's like torture. Yeah. So one of the things that I was trying to uh, do was take apart my steering wheel. And I realized then that if I don't have YouTube, I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> and But most of those days, you know, I was grabbing pieces of trim, pieces of my door, center console, you know, all my dashboard. If it was broken off, I was getting rid of it, just throwing it outside my truck. Um, I'm glad I didn't get a fine from DOT or whatever trooper (laughs) ended up. Why why would you get the fine? (laughs) For littering. For littering, that's crazy. Um, What kept you going, man? Like, every day, like, what kept you going? Like, honestly, like, you you didn't give up. Like, you you could, you, I mean... I'm like, I, I, I've had, we're 60 plus deep in episodes on this podcast, and I've never heard a story like this before, and I'm literally shocked, Yeah, right now, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, you know, hardships I went through, and um, I, I, I just can't imagine like having the free will to move around. But being stuck and also having these sirens above you, like, and they don't hear you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's like God is teasing you. And then on top of it, you're still trying to do everything to make ends meet and to to get out of the situation. Like, so I just, I just, like, your mental, like, your mental strength is like, you know, top notch, buddy. Thing. Were you awake most of the time or sleeping most of the time? Um, it was kind of a combination of both of them. Um, you know, one thing that do, does happen in survival situations, um, people generally start losing a lot of sleep, and then their mind starts going very ragged due to sleep loss. Um, and I even knew that beforehand. And... You know, so one thing I did want to keep doing is make sure that I did get my sleep. I wasn't sleeping, you know, 15, 16 hours a day, but, you know, I would take naps throughout the days between yelling for help and trying to uh, work my way out of my car. Um, It would have been nice if I had a book. Did you know know the time? Um, Yeah. I, I had a watch on me. Okay, so you didn't know the timing. Did you know the days? Um, I didn't know the days. It was just off my best guess of, you know, it's, my watch would say 7 o'clock. It's dark out, so I imagine it would be 7 o'clock p.m. Were you cold at all? Um, you know, thankfully we did have some warmer weather during that time, but 
there were days when it was a little brisk and I had my, I had a Carhartt jacket and a Letterman jacket that I would, uh, I'd wear one and then the other one I would use as a pillow or something like that. Try to keep my head warm while I was sleeping. Dude, if I could clap, I would <laughs> honestly like make me proud, man. Honestly, his, uh, his story's his story's not finished yet. Yeah, no, so we're so hold on. on. Fourth I, I, day. I want to I want to recap. So so while you're persevering, you come up with an idea for like a little irrigation system to get water, right? As best you can. Yeah. And then you're persevering, trying to take apart your steering wheel with the socket socket set that you could reach. You know what what other things did you do in survival mode to try to try to get yourself free? Um. Whether they were failed attempts or successful attempts. Yeah, so I knew, I wouldn't say I'm a mess, but I like disorderly cleanliness, if that makes sense. It makes total sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> it means if you walk into my room, maybe you'll see piles of bullshit everywhere, like, man, this place is a pigsty, but I know exactly where everything is and every pile makes sense to me. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> <Go on. laughs> um. So I knew I had a bunch of stuff on the floorboard of my passenger seat that I couldn't get to. Um, so one of the biggest things uh, for me was, um, you know, trying to figure out what I had, where I had it, and things like that. So with having me been at Hooters earlier that night, I knew I had wings down there. Mm. They probably wouldn't have been healthy for me to eat, but it would have been food. Better than the diesel water. Yeah. It's going to sound a little weird, but were you happy you saw some ass before you got it? <laughs> so what the hell? Let's shine some light on this podcast. Were you, were you happy you saw like a bunch of asses before you, you know, He's eating the wings, stuck? thinking about the Hooters. Like, damn. It's like, damn, that was a pretty good last <laughs> view. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, it, it wasn't. You said these girls were hot. I believed you. A, a few of them. Like one or two of them. This episode is brought to you by Hooters. Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank, uh, that, so, so, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, so, Lindsay was your servant. So Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay. I, I, had a, I had a follow-up question besides you uh, trying to, you know, persevere more. Um, besides like physically trying to persevere, was there any like spiritual moments that just some almost indescribable spiritual moments that you had? That's a good question. Um, so me spiritually, uh, God and I have been kind of on a interesting, uh, relationship recently. Um, having had religion used against me in the past, it's hard for me to kind of go back to it right now. Um, on that note, this has definitely been very eye-opening for me. Um, you know, I think in a situation like that, you know, whether a car wreck or a plane crash or whatever, you know, everybody at their lowest moment does cry for a God, you know. Of course. And, you know, I, I started doing that, you know, third or fourth day once I started losing a lot of hope was just crying out, you know, like, why would you do this to me? Why have you forsaken me? Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter because in a world where there are, what, 4,000 religions? Hmm. That's a fun fact. I did not know. Fuck yeah, the, there, there is a shit ton of religions. Are you throwing 4,000 out there or is that like the average I, number? I, I think that there's like 4,000 gods out there. Mm. Um, it's which, a lot of gods. Yeah. Um, it's a good thing one answers you. Yeah. yeah. I was just about to say, hopefully one answers us. Yeah. Well, I mean, one did answer me. Um, yeah, let's get to that day. So you finally, we, we finally get to six day. That's almost a week, right? And you're under this, this bridge and you're drinking water through your sweatpants. And like, so how did that day progress? Did you, you woke up in the morning? So I woke up that morning and the day before it had rained. So I was starting to get thirsty, uh, knowing that I didn't have any water at the moment, not knowing, you know, when is the next time I'm going to have water, you know? Um, 
So, you know, I kind of start out the day. I had a journal down there that I was trying to write in with a broken hand, which I do not recommend that. It hurts a lot. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm writing in it. And uh, What are you writing? That's the fun part. So that day I had lost a lot of hope um, between not having any water you know, in my head, I, I'm thinking it's the ninth day. Uh, lost a lot of um, hope on being rescued, things like that. So uh, that day, I I was planning on it kind of being my last day, um, which sucks to say. But you know, in a situation like that, um, hope is all I really had. You know, you're a realist. So. You know, that morning I start writing my obituary. I wrote, uh, you know, what happened, kind of a recount of the last six days. Um, you know, I'm writing letters to Kristen, my bre- best friend, dad, mom, uh, aunt and uncle, some of my other friends. Um, I'm writing out basically my last will and testament that morning. And, you know, so I uh, I spent, I don't know, maybe two, three hours yelling that morning, uh, trying to get somebody to hear me, like I'd been doing most days. And somehow I didn't lose my voice by that day. But um, I decided... I don't know, about one thirty that I was going to take a nap. You ever get those feelings where somebody's kind of watching you in your sleep? Yes, uh, every night. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, okay, that, that's, that's valid, yeah. As all his nurses are yeah. laughing hysterically. <laughs> um, so, you know, I kind of woke up with that feeling in my head and I'm like, that's fucking weird because I know nobody's down there. And as soon as I'm kind of thinking that, you know, I had, um, most cars nowadays have curtain airbags that go kind of protect your head from banging against the glass. And, um, I just see a hand kind of pull back the curtain and I'm like, what the fuck? And, uh, no way. Yeah, and manifested it. Yeah, so in my mind, I think I'm hallucinating. So he sticks his head kind of in the window. He's like, are you okay? You know, do you live here? Yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, no, I don't live here. Are you real? And that was like the first fucking questions that... You said, are you real? Yes. I was hallucinating. It, 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 it gets to the point where as soon as you give up hope, that's when your blessings happen. As soon as someone feels like quitting, that's when their breakthrough happens. Yeah. And you hear this type of story all the time. It just never fails to blow my mind. And so, you know, he asked me, you know, were you in a car wreck? I'm like, I think, I mean, yes. <laughs> no, I'm just, my car is just... Yeah. But under a bridge. No, I wasn't in a car, right? Yeah, dude, I was. <laughs> no, I'm just camping, bro. You never yeah. did this? Yeah. Like, you never do this? Try it out. <laughs> I, just, I like drinking. You want some diesel water? <laughs> I like drinking out of my sweatpants. Um, yeah, try it, dude. Cheers. So, so he yells at his son-in-law to go call the police. And, you know, he's saying something to me. I don't know what the fuck he's saying, though. Um by chance, were they Mexican individuals? Yeah. They were. We, we had an electrician work on the house, and I told him about your, you coming. And he's like, no shit. I seen him on the news. Some, <laughs> some Mexicans saved him, right? And I was like, I don't know, but maybe. So here we are. This is why I'm asking this question. <laughs> Shout out to the Mexicans. Out there. Shout out. T- to the Mexicans. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> um. So he yells at his uh, son-in-law to go call the police, call the ambulances, fire trucks, whatever. Um, And, you know, very shortly I start hearing these sirens and, you know, from past experience, they've just driven over me. 
And so that's what I think is going to happen again. And then I start hearing the breaks and I hear the sirens just stop and I hear people talking and I'm like, okay, you know, maybe this is real. And, you know, they, they start coming down, they start assessing how fucked up of a situation it is. Um, and they start, you know, coming up with a game plan on getting me out of there. And um, with the way the rescue had to be done, uh, they were wanting to basically roll my roof off and... Charles of life. Yeah, then yeah. try to spread the uh, engine off me. But they realized that they couldn't roll the roof off because of the, the angle that I was sitting at uh, probably would have caused the truck to roll over. So then they had to rip off the rear driver's side door, then the... Uh, my driver's side door and then there wasn't really anything to push off of because they had just ripped it all out uh, so they had to make their own places to push off of things like that just to push the engine off me and when they pushed the engine off me that was the first time in six days that I could feel from my knee down you felt free yes and then they start pulling me out. Well, they didn't start pulling me out. I tried, you know, kind of crawling out of there by myself. And they're like, you don't get to fucking move yet. <laughs> they told you that? It paraphrased, oh, okay. but... Um, Just shout out to all those first responders out there. Yeah. You don't get to move yeah. yet. This man's been in your front yard for the past six days, <laughs> and you finally get to him. Um I've I've gone by their firehouses. They're really nice guys, nice. and uh, I they plan on. Are, man. They, I, I, are. they all had better mustaches than me. That pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> what was your mustache like on the sixth day? Uh, about like what it is right now. Uh, um, Jesus Christ, man! It's a shame. It's looking mine though. Listen, we all can't have nice black hair like you. Oh, hey, 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 thanks, thanks. We all can't have nice, luxurious <laughs> hair like Max. Yeah, well, his hair is way better than mine. Uh, I'm trying to give you your flowers, man. Just accept them. Your jersey goes hard, and that, that, that necklace is amazing. Yeah, hey, yeah that, your teeth is... That, yeah. that wheelchair is pretty fucking sick, though. <laughs> thanks, man. Hey, he's he's like got the... Grand. Uh, he was cool. telling me about how he wants to get chrome spinners on there. Yeah. Oh, we could make it happen. Let's get a Benz. <laughs> I can have a Benz or I can have this chair. I chose this chair, bro. Oh, think how much my fucking leg's going to be. <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're going to get we're, we're gonna get to that. So finally you hear these first responders, EMTs, yeah. firefighters. Yeah. So they start pulling me out of my truck, and that's when I realized that my leg was pretty fucked up. And um, I can't feel my toes or anything like that, but I can feel where my leg was broken at. And I was talking to one of the firefighters last week, and he was saying that when they got me onto the stretcher, my toes were facing me. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So it had basically snapped my shin halfway, and then all that was just folded back looking at myself. It's a bit of a blessing that the engine crushed your leg and, and, and did such manipulation to your leg that you didn't even feel it for yeah. those days. Yeah. You know, imagine being in agonizing pain while mentally thinking these people right above you are never going to save you. Yeah. That, so, so lucky you weren't in that agonizing pain the I would, entire I mean, time. I, I would definitely say it's a blessing, too, that uh, it rained. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to bounce off your point real quick... Uh, you have to remember, my hand was shattered. She was in pain. So your bro. hand was hurting. And he was writing. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, lucky your lower <laughs> body wasn't also in agonizing pain. Um, and and it is a blessing that I landed where I was at, and you know I wasn't upside down, and I wasn't. I didn't have any internal injuries at all. Uh, my blood pressure was, I think, one twenty one over seventy five. Um, it's better than me. You know, my my sodium was a little low. Um, you have an eight. 
Uh, I was a little dehydrated for some reason. Oh, I, wow, that <laughs> uh, shocks me. That really does. Um, I thought you would be dehydrated for sure. Yeah. Um, but no internal bleeding, no, you know, no lacerations. No TBI. Yeah. No brain damage. Yeah. And it's fucking amazing, man. Yeah. So it, it was honestly like I was... Uh, so when I was younger, my sister and I always played a game because we always lived in houses with uh, staircases. And we would get in our sleeping bags and ride down the carpets or ride down the, uh, the carpeted stairs. And, you know, as kids, we think that the sleeping bag's going to protect us. But like in a situation like my wreck was, it was like I was just wrapped in bubble wrap for the entire thing mm. bes- besides my leg. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's two months since my wreck and I'm out here, you know, driving around, walking around, uh, well, hopping around, um, you know, um, I got my cast off last week, told I could, uh, Shout out to you, man. Yeah. start using that. Like it, it's in, it's crazy how fast my body's healed through all this. Uh, f- on the physical aspect, um, you know, on the mental aspect, it's going to take some time to heal through all this. Um, of course, no, you, you were suffering. I mean, you, you were being tortured by freaking sirens that were yeah. coming to you. And then finally, the one day you yeah, give up hope and you go to sleep, you get saved, right? Yeah. And what was it like when you finally got out and you got to the hospital? Like, were were you just like were you just in awe? So, yeah, I think that's that's the best way to explain kind of what I was feeling at the moment. Would be awe, you know, having all that hope just kind of slowly chipped away from me, and then. You know, at 7 o'clock at night, I'm laying in a hospital bed having 20 doctors standing over me. You know, it's definitely, uh, it was a long four hours, but it was an amazing four hours, you know. Of course, you were able to drink at the hospital, right? Um, no. (laughs) No. Really? Nope. So Uh, you can drink from your sweatpants, but you can't drink at the hospital? Yeah. Because the first night, um, I had to be on a no water diet um, for surgery the next day. I know that. I don't know that feeling, brother. Max has vented about this many times. They and gave you the sponge on a stick. Oh, I didn't even get a sponge. No, you were NPO. Um, I had a saline hooked up to me, and if my Yeah, if my mouth did get dry, they could take a rag and dab my uh, mouth with it. And it wasn't until, so two days after being rescued, so the 28th was when I could eat ice chips. Still not able to eat solid food. It's a fucking tease, right? The ice Uh, chips. Oh, it's fucking in. And and my, my nurse would only give me like three or four at a time. I would only get one. <laughs> and I, you're lucky. Your nurse gave you three. I wish I had three. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> when, I went in, when I went in septic shock, bro, <laughs> continue your story, man. So they, uh, so it, it's funny that once I was in the ICU, cause I get there, they put me in the ER um, and then they, they realized within like the first hour and a half that they had to amputate the bottom half of my leg. Um, so like halfway down my shin, they had to amputate because I had no feeling it was starting to die off. You know, that's just bad. How did you feel after they amputated it? Like, like what was your feeling that like part of your body is gone? Um, you know, I, I think having lived through that situation for six days, knowing that my leg was probably going to have to get amputated, but also the fact that I was, um, if I could have reached my paring knife, I would have done it myself. 
So I, I think that there was um, part of my brain that knew that I was going to lose a leg. So you, you accepted yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's funny that while I was in the ER, one of my friends was my nurse. One of my friends that I go drinking with. So Water or beer? I think he's talking about alcohol. So, really? I was just wondering. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so before the wreck, so alcohol. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, okay. it took, I, took me a minute. My bad. Yeah, our minds are focused on the diesel water still. I mean, I was just wondering, man. Um, yeah, I, I don't normally go out of my way to drink diesel water. Um, <laughs> I, I do think that that would be a pretty good energy drink, though. Diesel water. Yeah. Bring mineral, mineral water to a whole nother level. <laughs> yeah. Highway minerals. Yeah. Fuck. Um, so this girl that I go drinking with at the bar, uh, she was my RN and for a couple nights, she just had to wipe my ass. And how did that feel? Um, much respect to her. Like, holy fuck. I could never wipe my friend's ass. I get a finger in my ass every single day. See, I tried getting my, no, 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 no. It's an understatement. He gets a fist. Up his ass every single day. They gotta take the stool out, you know? But, yeah. but uh, I hate it. I fucking hate it. I hate it. Okay. But I have to do it. But you can continue your story, man. So you're into pegging. Oh, yeah. That, that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't feel, like, but, you know, like, Chris goes hard she she makes sure she she'll she'll go far up in my ass and be like max i can feel it i'm gonna take it down eric push on his stomach listen listen he could fit this much okay now look we, we brought up the mexicans <laughs> earlier if anyone's looking for a mule max is your candidate <laughs> You could fit two kilos up there, I promise you. And he's not getting searched at the border. Look at him. It's a liability if you hurt him. They don't ever want to go near Max. You will get your product. We're just going to have a hefty tax on Life to the Max. Brought to you by Matt. And cocaine. No, right. <laughs> we do not endorse cocaine or the usage of it. You, uh, did you, were you able to feel her wiping your ass? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was so weird. So, of course, below the fracture side, I couldn't feel my toes or anything like that, um, which I have to say is the weirdest fucking feeling ever. So I don't... You're fucking strong as shit for knowing it's all there but not being able to feel it. it I can't it, feel anything. It, at least you don't have to buy Advil or that's Tylenol. Funny. That's true. I got oxycodone. <laughs> I wouldn't feel and shit with that either. Talking about feeling, and, and as our first amputee being on the show, I have a, I'm have curious about a phantom pains. Do you ever experience yeah. yes. that? How yes. How would you describe it to people? Um, like my leg's still there, but I feel everything. It'll be like a jolt of electricity running down my leg, through my toes, and then into my into like the bottom of my foot. So... Whenever, um, basically, you ever have, like, the bottom of your foot cramp? Mm -hmm. So it's like that feeling, but my entire leg will cramp. You're spitting facts because that's how I feel right now. Every day, that's how I feel. That, that, that like, prickly feeling, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Where do you my feel whole, it the most? My hands, my feet, my throat. My, mostly my heels and my throat. Because I told you I have uh, fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. so I have fibromyalgia. I do have a question, though. How long were you in the hospital? Uh, from December 26th to January 17th, so 21 days. And, and you, were, you said you recovered pretty quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you uh, tell the doctors, like, what you were drinking and stuff? Like, how you were able to, you know, survive the six days? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But yeah. As, as soon as I got to the hospital, first thing they did was hook me up to a catheter, which is the strangest fucking feeling ever. I wouldn't know. I mean, I have a catheter. Yeah. I can't feel it. Um, mm -hmm. There's perks to this shit. 
um, so with a catheter, you just forget your peeing. And so, like, I was laying in the hospital bed with, like, my dad and friends in there. And they're like, oh, what's that? I'm like, oh, that's my, my piss jug. Mm. And I got one too. Your your, your body right. gets to the point where you're pissing and you don't even know you are. Interesting. It's just flowing. Yeah, it's just like, free flowing. How how many people visited you, man? Um, I had a bunch of people visit me. Um, how yeah. did it feel when you got that support? Yeah, shout out to them. You know, it, it's not just my friends and family who have been supportive. It's been. And I say this with um, all the love in the world. Like, it's everybody. Like, I, I've had people, um, like, a post I made had 265,000 views within a day. Wow. Um, my story was Googled 339 million times wow. in 48 hours. And the amount of, you know, support from people supporting my GoFundMe to people who have, you know, joined me on this story. I know your mom mentioned that she's been watching my story. And so thank you for that. Um, I'll definitely uh, check out your GoFundMe. I didn't, I didn't even know you had one. Yeah. Um, it's linked in all my bios. We'll link it in the description below on this podcast for sure. Um, you know, I, I didn't ask my best, or I didn't ask my friend to set up the GoFundMe. It was just something that she did. And, you know, people saw my story and they just start donating. And, um, you know, had I gotten like 10, 15,000, I would have been more than happy with that just to, kind of helped me move forward but I mean I th like last time I looked at it it was at $108,000 that's good man and that's I'm like for you. holy shit like I I have people donating that I've heard about you know some like our so I'm in a union so we have like international vice presidents and shit and you know some of those have donated and I've never even met them but, you know, in our union, it's a lot of solidarity and it's a lot of brotherhood, kind of like you being in the military. I was and just about to get to that because when I got on my car accident, the amount of support I got, like, through Facebook and people reaching out, people from high school that, like, I never talked to, people, like, that I've never even known, just reaching out and, like, saying, like, a kind word. Th those comments got me through, like... Oh, yeah. Th you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. it really did. Like, it, it gives you encouragement. Like, oh, yeah. So I'm happy it happened. This accident happened during, like, th this era of social media where we were able to connect and stuff. Oh, yeah. Just like you. Im imagine if this happened back in, like, the early 1900s, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, oh, you know, he was run over by a horse and buggy. Yeah. Both, both his legs are broke. He's got to get him amputated. Okay, well, send him down to the village doctor, yeah. and that's it. Get the saw and whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the amount of love and support, you know, within the first week on Facebook, I had 1,500 messages. And it took me for, like, I, I was waking up at, four o'clock in the hospital because I didn't want the phlebotomist to come in there, take my blood. Um, <laughs> uh, Cause she would always come in every morning at six o'clock. Yeah, I know. I know. And I'm like, I want, I'm in the hospital and I'm on vacation right now. Fucking let me sleep in. Dude, you did. <laughs> I love it. This is the biggest thing in the hospital. They say, try to get some sleep, right? Try yeah. to get some sleep. And I'm like, okay, I'll try to get some sleep. And then freaking two hours later, I get woken up <laughs> by someone like that's taking my blood pressure. Oh, yeah. just taking your vitals, sweetheart. You know, yeah. it's like, bitch, I'm trying to fucking sleep <laughs> so they would give me trazodone and trazodone knocks my ass to sleep but then they would come by at 12 o'clock wake me up to give me meds wake me up at three o'clock give me meds wake me up at six o'clock to take my uh vitals 
do blood work. And then nine o'clock, they would come back around with meds. I'm like, I slept better in the car. God damn it. <laughs> damn. <laughs> I mean, I mean you're not back. wrong. <laughs> pros and cons. The pros and cons. Yo, so I, I got one more question for you. You talked about your perseverance when you were surviving in the truck, and you talked about the perseverance recovering in the hospital. I want to talk about the perseverance you're going through recovering back to reality. That's back what in the real I, world. I was just yeah. about to we're, ask. We're, we're in our minds, Max. Great minds think alike. Yeah. So even now, you know, I'm taken to social media a lot more uh, because there are a lot of people want, who want to keep up with my story and things like that. Um, you know, the whole social media thing, I'm not the greatest at, so I'm oh, still... we are not yet. <laughs> but we're doing our best. Dude, I hate social media. I don't know if I, like, I used to like it back then. C- coming from the guy who has a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Eric handles yeah. my social media. Oh, yeah, dude. It's a different kind of animal, man, but, you know... It is. The support, again, the support is, like, the biggest oh, yeah. component in any situation, you know? Oh, yeah. It's more... It's more important than the numbers, I had in like, my opinion. I had like 500 people like post on my like Facebook when I first got injured, and I read every single one of those yep. posts, and I'm just like, wow, like this, like this is crazy. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I was paralyzed from the neck down, and I had a seat collar on, neck collar. You know what I mean? I, I hate that I, fucking thing. And I had, <laughs> and I had a, a ventilator. On, I couldn't feel anything, you know? So the only thing that's, like, getting me through are the people that are supporting me, like my family and my friends and all these random people that are giving me love and support just like they gave you, Yeah, you know? Besides the social media, do you feel anxiety when you're driving? Do you? So I still haven't been, I haven't stopped at the rec site yet. Um, I went and seen my truck a couple weeks ago. Um, and you know, that, that was the first time I've seen it in person. And that was the first time I actually seen how bad it was from the outside. Uh, of course I spent six days on the inside, but I couldn't see how fucked up it was on the outside. Mm -hmm. So I think going by there and actually seeing it in person, uh, it wasn't, you know, a really sorrowful experience. It was more of a very, it, it was kind of uh, therapeutic, you know. Interesting. Um, because, you know, th- this chapter isn't over, but it was like that paragraph ended, you know. Like there, there's still more in this chapter to go on. So and, much more. Um, but, you know my wreck is over i'm healing and you You're know living life to the max yeah <laughs> living <laughs> life to the max well, well, we 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 kind of uh we kind of got off track when you said that you got home so like when you got home you know, I, I i i was watching your youtube videos and you have an apartment now or something yeah like did you have that apartment when you got home um so the, there was a strange set of events around me being discharged and where I was going to be discharged to. Um, the place that I live in what wasn't going to be um, the best for me moving forward in terms of healing and accessibility wise. So that is something that I had to figure out within four days. Um, from, so I was supposed to be discharged on a Thursday and I had to end up pushing it back to a Tuesday because I couldn't get into a new apartment quick enough to have it viable. Um, when you got to your new apartment, you finally slept for the first time at night. How was that? It was good. Um, now, from the hospital to the apartment, uh, we stayed at, because uh, my family had flown up. My dad, aunt, and grandma had flown up from Atlanta, Georgia. And so we stayed at a, there's a hotel on Notre Dame, and we stayed there for a week. 
while we got kind of the apartment furnished and everything. So, um, you know, it, it was the first night in almost a month that, you know, I could wake up and I didn't have to be somewhere and I didn't have to, you know, have my blood taken or have uh, my vitals checked or, you know, hey, you know, wake up at seven o'clock, we're going to go to Lowe's and grab stuff for your apartment. It was the first day I could actually relax. So give me like a it's like a day day in life experience. You told uh, when I was watching your YouTube channel, you said, "Well, I got interview Doctor Appointment, Chicago Tribune, Life to the Max Pot." <laughs> but uh, yeah, go like, see Lindsay see, at Hooters. Yeah, go, you know. like, yeah just shout out to Lindsay at Hooters. You know, you know who she, you know who you are. I'll yeah. show you her Instagram later. <laughs> we'll link it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, so what is it like when you wake up in the morning? Uh, so wake up in the morning. I got a ninth floor view of the river and overlooking downtown South Bend. So, uh, sun shines right in my eyes right about seven eight o'clock in the morning, which kind of pisses me off. But it, it's a nice way to wake well, it up. Pisses me off too. Trust me. <laughs> um. Yeah, so most days, depending on what I'm doing, uh, some days I wake up, for instance, today, um, woke up, ate a little bit of breakfast, not a whole lot, just I don't like eating naked. before I drive. Um, was I naked? Yeah, like do you like put clothes on before you eat breakfast? Uh, generally, sometimes, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes in the morning I like airing out my stump. Uh, just make sure that smells good for the day. Spray yeah, it with. I thought that was the only way. Yeah, spray it with Febreze a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you know, most mornings are pretty easy going. Wednesdays I have wound care, so they check the incisions and all that. Um, you know, if I've got a news interview, I, I try to schedule all my news interviews in the afternoon just so I don't have to wake up early because nobody likes waking up before noon. Um, oh my God. <laughs> um, a lot of days I have doctor's appointments, so that takes up a lot of my time. So I'll just wake up, eat breakfast, go to them, um, kind of relax the rest of the day, um, cook some food. Yeah, pretty. Uh, uh, I'm I'm trying to take things slow right now, just while I'm healing up. Right. Once I get my prosthetic, then I'll be running. I was just gonna get into that. So, like, uh, your prosthetic? Are you pretty excited about this? Yeah, um, you know, it's gonna be nice to be able to. So, one thing that kind of hinders me right now, uh, getting around on wheelchair walker um, crutches, you know. One thing that I do feel kind of is true for me personally is a little bit of that vulnerability of knowing all somebody has to do is, you know, take my walker or my crutches or something like that, and I can't chase after them. Um, so I know the feeling. I know you're talking about. Well, if somebody takes your wheelchair, there might be bigger problems than well, that. Well, they could just literally just take the battle off. And then, um, yeah. To, to yeah. Me, it's it's that simple, but I, I definitely know the feeling of what you're talking about. Thanks for letting me know your weakness. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, mm -hmm. take it off. In, Go in, for it. In case you ever piss me off. <laughs> Go for it. Or in case he's talking too much. Just. Take my yeah. breath away. You mother... <laughs> but please, please tell me that you use that for your uh, Tinder pickup line. Uh, I did. Uh, I did a few times. Yeah. Uh, you take my breath I, away. I, I also say like that. Uh, I can. I literally can. I don't. Like I, you can't suffocate me if you want to sit on my face. Like I, I do that too. Because <laughs> I, I got air going through my freaking neck, and I don't yeah. need. I don't need my my. You could just keep face. going. Hey, just keep going. He's he's got his own. Uh, uh, snorkel. Yeah. Exactly. He doesn't have to come up for air. <laughs> there are freaking He's perks. finishing the job. There are perks. So if you were to go scuba diving, would they just plug it into your throat or? Uh, 
I don't think I can go scuba diving. Can we get a RNs? Unless we have to take the machine. Oh, yeah, you can't swim. No. I could float, maybe. I don't know. We read a book where Christopher Reeves was, was floating in the water for therapy. Yeah. And they would keep, yeah. but they would keep the vent like he he could not like put his neck under the water because yeah. obviously he would He'd get pneumonia. probably drown himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the vent like definitely uh, stops a lot. Like it definitely like uh, doesn't allow me to do a lot of things. It makes things a, a hell of a lot harder. Like I mean, just just getting in this room was like a, it's it's a mission sometimes. Yeah. You know, but, uh, I mean... Mission possible. Yeah, you know, improvise, adapt, overcome. You oh, know, yeah. I mean, that's, what, that's what I like to say. And, uh, I mean, th- and that's what you did, too. And uh, when you get your prosthetic leg, I mean, th- like, like like I was going to say, uh, in the Army, I had a sergeant who lost his leg <laughs> to a car accident, a Humvee accident, and a, another Humvee crashed into another Humvee that had a skin door. So basically that metal like went straight into his leg and he was bleeding out and someone put a tourniquet on him and he had to go to uh, like a hospital and then they, they took his leg, they took uh, the same part where you are they're, they're, they took it out, and he told me it's been, like, the biggest blessing in his life. And I'm like, what? Like, you losing your your leg? And then he was like, yeah, it's given me more appreciation to life. You yeah. Know? And so. so one of the jokes I always make now is that, uh, you know, how a lot of people always compare things like, oh, you know, that's got to cost an arm and a leg or something like that. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it's nice having the appreciation knowing that my life cost me my leg. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think if it came down to anybody, I think they'd do the same thing, you know? I would hope so. Yeah. Otherwise. I mean, I'm, I'm too young to die. You know, (laughs) there, there there are too many hot girls out there for me to die. (laughs) You're telling me you, you should you should see our podcast we just posted. Like, <laughs> some pretty decent chicks. Check them out. I uh, will. But I, but I, and and, and where like, can I find this at? Sound like a, a low grade uh, pimp. Life the Max podcast. That's okay. Where you can find it at. You know. Um, what, what does that stream on? Is that just it's, Instagram it's all or all platforms? All platforms and, and YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so it, it, uh, my last question to ask you is like, so when I first got injured, I uh, do my whole life was upside down. Like it was, it was insane. Like I, I like they're like saying, okay, well we're gonna do a bowel program and like stool and all this stuff. And I, I didn't even know what stool was, dude. Like I was like. I was I was in the military. I was like trying to become a ranger, you know, like uh, doing everything possible to go special forces and like uh, just be a good soldier, you know. Yeah. And uh, you wanted to get all the women, didn't you? <laughs> Somewhat. No, <laughs> there's a guy in the military, my battalion commander at the time, Colonel Smith. He inspired the hell out of me when I saw him. I was like, I want to be like this guy. And okay. He was in Black Hawk Down, so I was like, I want to be like this guy. I want to do everything this guy did. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was working hard, even on the weekends. On when I got off work, which is garrison. So when when we're doing like regular work, it's usually like you know, like you wake up at four in the morning and get off at like five p.m. I yeah. would still go to the gym, work out, and try to like you know like improve myself to uh, be the best and I and I was the best and, and like people will vouch for me including yeah. Colonel Smith you know what I mean like so um, and when that was all taken away from me that uh, that's, that sucks so I, I gotta ask you so you were in the car for six days so 
you, 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 uh, you didn't know if you were going to be, uh, be alive or dead, you know. But when you got to the hospital and uh, they took your leg off and then they amputated your leg and then you, you finally got home. Like, uh, how is life been now? Like, does, does it, is it still, like, fresh wounds? So uh, I don't think it's as much fresh wounds as most people would think. Um, you know, I, I've been asked by so many people so many times what happened, how did it happen, um, you know, what were your thoughts through that. And for me, I think that the most therapeutic thing that I've done through this whole ordeal is tell my story. And, you know, telling your story is not only therapeutic, but it can also help other people. And generally, when you're helping other people, that in and of itself, seeing that reward, seeing that person have a better life because of something you said or something you did, it's that in and of itself is such a great blessing. It's beautiful. It is. That's exactly it's what life to the max is all it's about, it really man. Is. It really is. Um, so I, I have a question. Do you have any questions for me? Because Eric told me you you only told you a little bit about yeah. my story. Um, so Eric said that, uh, you know, it's you were in a construction accident or something like that. No, so uh, so I so I was in my prime, bro, in the military. Uh, it was um, March twenty first was my birthday, and my accident was March twenty fourth. And okay. uh, I was driving up to see my family, right, and to see my girlfriend at the time, uh, and. I remember vividly being outside of the gate of our, our, like, base. We were filling up on gas, and Nicholson, the driver, was like, hey, um, do you want to drive first for me? And I was like, fuck, uh, I was like, you know what, I'll, uh, I'll, you could drive first, you know what I mean? And then I, like, stopped for a split second, and I was like, you know what, actually, I'll drive first. And I, because I wanted to wake up to my hometown. Yeah. Right? And then I uh, drove halfway, got to Terre Haute, Indiana, and uh, I uh, put my seat down and he started driving. I was like, wake me up when we get to Chicago. And so my girl, I loved her. And I woke up in the hospital three days later, paralyzed from the neck down, breathing through a machine, like not being able to talk. I couldn't talk for 15 days. I was in the ICU. I couldn't eat for four months. I couldn't drink for a month. But after the month, I was only allowed to have t- tablespoons of water, which is kind of a tease, but whatever. Yeah. And a lot of nurses just don't want to sit there at night and give you tablespoons of water. Right. You know what I mean, unless they're good people, then usually night nurses like just want to like get their rounds done, you know. And, yeah. uh, and go play on their yeah. phones. Yeah, just do, do what they gotta do, you know what I mean? Like, but, uh, yeah, dude, my whole life flipped upside down. I uh, went through a uh, spinal shock, spinal cord shock. Uh, I went through, um, I, I, like, remember vividly, like, the accident, because I was sleeping, and I woke up to the accident, and uh, I was in a coma, and then I was in the hospital for a year, and uh, I was at Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. I uh, was I was doing therapy and stuff, and I was just like trying my best to like think like okay, I just have to like think like, I'm gonna walk again. I just this this just is all t- temporary, you know. The vents just temporary, like and like they that they're like trying to like explain how serious this is but my military attitude i'm like no i'm gonna walk again you're crazy yeah like you know what i mean and they're like that's you know that's not how it works you know and then after um a few months my girlfriend left me unfortunately that 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 was like a dagger in the heart you know because she was <clears throat> like my rock and then, uh but it also helped me because I was like, you know what, I'm just going to focus on therapy, right? Then I, uh, then I, uh, 
I actually uh, start talking to other women. I was surprised that like other women would like me, and I got a. I actually started dating a girlfriend. She had a boyfriend. I got her, and I was dumb enough to to not to like talk to other women when I was dating her. So that was stupid. So yeah. Uh, then I got home, uh, and I was just partying. Party, like I was going to clubs, I was going to strip clubs, I was freaking having people over, I was smoking, I didn't, like, I didn't give a fuck, like, I, I, not one fuck, like, you know, and then, uh, years go by, you know, and, uh, a year goes by, and I realize all these people that are coming over are just fucking using me, so I close safe, right, and, like, everybody leaves, besides two people, you know, that I'm, I'm miserable, I'm alone. I'm sad, I'm depressed, you know, I'm overweight. So I start uh, doing therapy, finding a purpose, you know. And then fast forward, like, you know, four years later, uh, I meet this guy and we start this podcast. And that's uh, that's that's how the accident happened. I mean, that that's like a, a quick summary, a quick, like, summary of what happened. I have an episode coming out called Split Second. Uh, and it's basically the first episode that we have on our podcast, but it's going to be on camera. Okay. Because, like, uh, like everyone wants to listen to my story, but they have to listen to it when we had no experience whatsoever with podcasting. Yeah. And it's just, it's, like, uh, very raw, you know? It's not, it's not, it's not like, a, it's, it's a good podcast, but it's long. You know, and the one I did, um, that's going to be released soon. That That's going to, like, show, like, what I actually went through. Because, like, I mean, like, I to call a nurse, I had to blow a straw. You know what I mean? Like, like and then, uh, not, like, and then, like, after eight years now, knowing, like, like I, I can't move my arms and shit. It's so weird. Yeah. And then I feel that nerve pain you're talking about like all the time it's the weirdest feeling yeah. but I like don't I don't like you know like sit down and be like okay I gotta like I, like I'm gonna like, give up on life and this and that you know I, I like you know you, you don't hate your situation to everyone out there if you're in a situation you not hate your situation you embrace it that's what you do and that's what you do man yeah. you know what I mean it's all and you can do sometimes it's all you can you know, and we're both writing books. We're both, we're both living life to the max. You're getting all these interviews, man. I wish the fucking best for you. I really do. Like, and I'm happy Eric reached out to you. Uh, do you want to play yourself in the movie? What movie? The movie that they make about me. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll say hell yeah for Max. <laughs> I mean, last time someone offered me acting, uh, that uh, that didn't work. Like he screwed he screwed me over. He he knows who he is. But uh, yeah, I would love to. If you want to, uh, I mean, all you got to do is just sit there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> do you want? Look at this. Perfect. Hey, yes. you got it. Do you want to see? <laughs> do you want to see? No, just, just You're you. shaking your chain off, man. Calm down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but dude, it's honestly been a pleasure having you on. It, yeah. it, literally, it literally is. And you're welcome anytime to okay. be on. And, uh, do you want to uh, shout out anybody? Like, uh, do you want to like, uh, shout out the fire department? Yeah, so the uh, Portage Fire Department, uh, House 2 and 3, uh, thank you guys for being the first responders there and for keeping me alive. And then... All the staff at uh, Beacon Medical Center, thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you for helping me get back on my foot. And, you know, I'm going uh, to live this life to the max. It, it's good to have the, uh, It's good to inspire people and yeah. motivate people because the, the only reason why we started this podcast is to show people the perspective of life. That, like, it's different. You walked in, the first thing you said to me was like, shit, I got nothing to complain about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, 
oh, it ain't like that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we all have our bad days. Yeah. But, like, if I'm able to give you strength or inspiration, then I'm proud to do that. And I feel happy that I'm able to do that. And for everybody out there, I'm happy that I'm able to do that. But you give me inspiration. I freaking improvising, adapting, and overcoming your situation. Six days in, in a car, six days, and figuring out ways to drink water, figuring out ways to survive. And then finally, when you give up, someone finds you. That's how it is. Yeah. That's how it is. That's all you had to do. You should have gave up on the first day and they would have found you. That's all you had to do was give up. All right, everybody, uh, this has been Life to the Max. You can follow us on Life to the Max podcast on Instagram. Follow us on, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. We're streaming all platforms, Apple and Spotify. And uh, please, uh, please comment because this was a good one. Thank you. Prosthetic man, so you, a video or a picture if you rock and then both. Oh, yeah. One on each side. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've got both. Those are pretty cool. Aww, those are nice. I like those. Wow. Oh, yeah. mm. I do like that suede though. Do those actually match what you wear? I thought that same thing too. Oh, the same thing. oh they do, they match what you're wearing. Yeah, but I feel bad about wearing nice shoes right now because I just have to You don't to think they're nice, so just put them on. Oh, you matter. guys are making a big deal out of them. <laughs> that makes me think. Oh, new laces, too. Oh, we'll see, that's how they roll. Nice. <laughs> you do, right? Oh my god, they're gorgeous. Shit. <laughs> Thank you. I've, I've never been a sneakerhead. Oh, that's, a, that's, that's, that's nice. You're going to be a now. You're like, bitch, that's awesome too. <laughs> <laughs>